I'd also like to uh, shout out to members of my team that, that helped with this. Uh, Glenn McLaughlin and, and Adam Wong have especially led a lot on this and Terrence Lewis on the sysadmin team. I'll mention uh, Yard of Leaders infrastructure through the through the talk. I wanted to sort of go over relatively high level sort of, you know, what it is about the HT Condor uh, ecosystem that I, I found to be uh, critical to what we're doing at uh, George Washington University. Our research computing team, uh, research technology services, it's a uh, full service research computing organization uh, traditional HPC cluster, relatively modest scale, a little over 200 nodes, GPU, CPU, Slurm, InfiniBand, the kinds of things that you tend to see in campus HPC infrastructures. Uh, with the retirement of our original uh, HPC cluster, Colonial One, there were some nodes that we felt like still had some road time in them. And so we built a, a small teaching cluster and we were able to start off on this pilot in HT Condor to do some more of the uh, high throughput workloads that we tend to see. Also in the team are where the, <clears throat> we run the internet two connector for the capital area, uh, the Karen network. Of course, uh, many of our researchers are interested in, in cloud resources. And so uh, helping them engineer those solutions and data management using Redcap and Globus and, and so forth. And uh, the, the, the usual, you know, cluster under the desk that they ask for assistance on. And, and so forth, or all, all the kinds of things that we, that we get involved in. Uh, George Washington University has, has several different uh, schools, engineering, uh, Columbia College of Arts and Sciences and so forth, and the support teams from uh, uh, those schools that had focused on research computing uh, recently joined uh, RTS in some restructuring of how we do research computing at GW. Uh, so we have a, a, a pretty broad uh, set of talent and, and demands upon the team. Um, this was to be a, a picture of our uh, new Pegasus cluster. Colonial one is, is a little more photogenic at this time. So, so we have a, a legacy photo of that, but uh, coming soon, we'll, we'll, we'll get another Pegasus in here. But you can see the Battlestar Galactica theme of our, of our, of our systems. But we felt like, you know, with the, uh, the, the other problem, you know, good, good news and bad news is uh, Pegasus is a very popular HPC resource. And now we're seeing utilization offer you know, often well into the 80s and sometimes 90%, um, which is great for utilization and see how efficient we are. And, and then users find that they sometimes have to wait much longer than they would have thought. With that said, uh, like in many uh, HPC environments, a lot of the jobs are really, uh, you know, single node run, run under an hour. Of course, there's jobs that run for up to two weeks is our uh, uh, limit on, on times. That's our policy. And also what was kind of surprising to us, we looked at the uh, memory utilization and we're seeing a lot of jobs uh, that are you know, using less than 10 gigabytes of RAM. So actually we have a, a fair number of high throughput type jobs uh, on, the, on the cluster, but you know, everything is pre or distributed. There's, there's long tails uh, out there, of course, and these are sort of where are most of the data, but what's the average is, is much, much higher. But a lot of things that we do here, a lot of the research that's done at George Washington, like again, many uh, research universities uh, fit nicely into high throughput computing and the scalability that that provides us. So we have some of the nodes that were from the, the expansion of Colonial One from a few years ago that sort of became our initial foray into uh, HT Condor and uh, worked a lot with the folks at the Open Science Grid and HT Condor uh, team to get that up and running and that became uh, popular and people wanted to use that. So we wanted to expand that. We had a particular project come along that needed more storage capability uh, than we had and additional uh, CPU requirements. So we had a pretty interesting OpenStack deployment that had been used for some cyber range applications and other very flexible things that um, Yarda Fleeter had, had done for us. And uh, interesting infrastructure that lives actually in our, our uh, Karen facility out at, at Equinix. And so we, we've repurposed some of that and been able to apply it as a sort of a, a using that grid model uh, to add to our HD Condor deployment. We're also in the process of bringing some GPUs from Pegasus over to our HD Condor uh, environment. You know, login nodes don't necessarily need the, the GPUs. So we'll have 
some GPUs available in the login nodes for testing and so forth. We felt like let's since we have them there, let's let's repurpose them into HD Condor. So a few things, you know, we're we're at the point where we're starting to look at the the next generation of growing that infrastructure somewhat and really taking advantage of that uh, grid infrastructure. Um, I'm sure some of you are saying, you know, uh, a petabyte of, of Gluster. Well, that's 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 interesting. It's a little different. Uh, a little science project we had going on. We thought, well, we've got it here. Let's let's give it a go. Uh, so looking forward to that. We actually uh, Yarda has being an OpenStack guide and a lot of work with Ceph, and so we've got a petabyte of Ceph and a petabyte of Gluster using as a as a comparison environment. But that's um, going to be a lot of uh, interesting work going on there. But again, that was really to solve a particular um, application that I'll, I'll get to in, in a few minutes where they had some more uh, storage requirements. But it's what we're seeing is that sort of eclectic mix of high throughput applications that you know, have, have come to us. And so we've just wanted to talk about a couple of different science drivers that have really been success stories for us. Uh, one of those, a genomics uh, application uh, using the, the 10X genomics platform to do some single cell RNA sequencing. Uh, pretty interesting application here uh, again, the, the issue here is lots of lots of reads, lots of uh, pipe, a big pipeline to go through, and getting that pipeline to interact with the uh, Dagman uh, tool. So the Cell Ranger tool does, you know, sort of, you know, fast queue counts and aggregations, the the usual kind of uh, things you see in these bioinformatics uh, pipelines. In this case, in the single cell RNA uh, sequencing application. Uh, we're ultimately looking at you know a single file with you know, a billion sequencing reads. So this is going to take a lot of computational resources, but again, it, it breaks apart very nicely into numerous independent uh, processes, not prices. I suppose I, I could make it independent prices too, but uh, processes. And so we felt like that was a really good candidate for one of these high throughput. Um, constructions and it's, it's worked out very well and they've been really happy with the results uh, that they've been getting from that. Uh, similarly, uh, we had a, a, a physics application come to us and this one we especially worked closely with our friends at Open Science Grid um, dealing with a, a big instrument down at JLab where because of the expense of doing work on the physical machine uh, the simulations are a real important element for identifying what, what do you really want to go into this machine that can cost you know, tens of thousands of dollars an hour to, to run. Uh, and so the, the Giant 4 Monte Carlo uh, simulation in, uh, environment uh, was, was being used to uh, work with this application. And here in, in this case, the, the researcher you know, graduate student working towards conclusion needed to get results in a few months. And by the way, would need a you know a few million uh, core hours uh, to complete that. And so we uh, uh, went to the uh, Open Science Grid community, and they were able to uh, to give us a hand getting this research done. This also, you know, it was really nice to be able to work in a singularity environment, and that was uh, obviously very useful for being deployed into the environment, making that very portable. And again, a great success story for being able to get science done, which is you know, what we're about here. So our, our newest uh, application is a uh, working again to do some sequencing. Now we're looking at the, the Konzo disease in uh, Congo, which is a sort of metabolic and, and uh, uh, um, microbiota uh, analysis they're doing across different towns and cities in the Congo and with our Children's National Hospital colleagues across town. So lots of data in a, uh, in a public health uh, context, big collaboration uh, between these uh, institutes. And in this case, they want to gather uh, sequencing data from, you know, ho hopefully a thousand individuals to do reference genomes and look at what is it that, that makes people able to be uh, resistant to uh, this disease or not. A lot of that comes from microbiota as well. And this was going to be looking at 25 terabytes of data this year and then looking to grow to 100 terabytes over the next couple of years. Again, the bioinformatics pipelines are very good at um, adapting, being adapted to the uh, high throughput analysis that we have here kinds of things that, that we're seeing in a lot of these pipelines. So that was, 
another good example of the collaborations uh, that we've been seeing to be successful at, at doing science. Uh, so, and that's really been the character of what's been strategic about um, you know, using uh, HT Condor and, and serving the, um, the high throughput workflows has also been those collaborations in the community uh, and the uh, developing a possible alternative resource to our big HPC cluster on the one hand and relieving some of the pressure on the small jobs in that environment. Uh, but also building the relationships across our researchers and within the HT Condor and OSG community. And that's, that's one of the things that's been most remarkable from, from my perspective has been, you know, how useful the community has been and how helpful uh, the community has been to, uh, to get this going. So it's just been a really good experience for us. And, you know, HPC clusters obviously can be adapted to these high throughput community uh, applications. Um, and so that will continue to be an important platform for us. Uh, but this has been a, a real um, a strong effort for us. So it looks like I uh, am out of slides. So I, I thought I had a, a thanks slide for, for TJ. HD Condor Group has been especially helpful uh, to us and really appreciate the uh, support from the community. So I'll give you back a, a few minutes of your time, I think. <laughs>